the man. It is mercy. May the gods pity the man who, in his callousness, can remain sane to the hideous end. H.P. Lovecraft, The Temple. Hello, and welcome to Vorpal Tales, the home of awesome adventures and terrifying tales. This afternoon, we resume this terrifying tale, Masks of Nihilatotep, using the Call of Cthulhu system published by Chaosium. This is a long-running story about desperate, violent cults and the people who have decided to oppose them. Expect darkness, horror, and insanity, especially as the plucky investigators close in on the vicious cult leader, Edward Gavigan. If you still hunger for more vorpal content, we run one and sometimes two games every week. If you want more terrifying tales, check out Cult running an hour after this game wraps. Tomorrow night, we've got Red Opera running at 11 p.m. Eastern, along with Mage, White Walls, and Sunday, and Ravenloft and Solemn Vale on Mondays. If awesome adventures are more your speed, Pathfinder Reign of Winter airs tomorrow at 7. Actually, it won't. Programming change for that. Uh, but we do have Dark Sun on Tuesdays, Starfinder on Wednesdays, and Savage Worlds, Defenders of Tomorrow on Thursdays. For our Patreon, Patreon, Patreon patrons, you have D&D, The Wilds Beyond the Witchlight, Doctor Who, Chameleon Arch, and Mage the Awakening Secret World to look forward to, some of which have already started recording and are going to be available very soon on Patreon. And for Patreons subscribed at $20 or higher, you will also gain access to Call of Cthulhu Express run by yours truly. Also, a shout out to one of our partners, Norse Foundry Dice. These colorful aluminum, gemstone, and even wooden dice promise to add just the right kind of flair to your dice bag. Buy them in standard seven dice spreads, sets of D10s, or even custom dice for systems like Blade in the Dark or D6 Wargaming. And if you really like the thought of a haunted dice bag, you can even get your sets in bone. Peruse their entire catalog at norsefoundry.com. As always, stay up to date on our current shows by following Vorpal Tales on Twitter and Instagram. And if you still just can't live without more Vorpal content in your life, come join our Discord and hang out with all the nerds over there. For tonight, spooky friends, introduce yourself and your characters to the audience. Hello, people. I'm Alan, also known as the Eldritch Keeper, and today I will be playing Gudrun Schulz. Hello, everyone. I'm Dave, and tonight I am playing Percy Harrington II. Hello, all. I am Devin, and uh, tonight I am playing Philip Legee. Everyone keeps calling me the guy. Hello, I'm Kisama. You can find me on <laughs> on Twitter at TrueKisama, and tonight I will be Frank Marshall, Vicky Schwarm, one of the two. Hi, everybody. I'm Kitty Kimchi, and today I'm going to be playing Dorothy Fanbridge. And I am your keeper, Rachel. You can find me Stolen Fires pretty much everywhere on the internet. Uh, for now, uh, we, you, had a pretty eventful session last session. Uh, Devin, do you mind reading the recap for our players and audience? Sweet. <laughs> uh, we reconvened back in London. Uh, on Thursday at 9 a.m., uh, we, Percival and Dickie enter Dorothy's bookstore and introduces Dickie, another quickie, I presume. Uh, call me Frank Marshall. It'll be easier that way. They explain that they have lost Mr. Crowley, and uh, Percival gives uh, her a rundown of recent events. Following that, they meet up with Mr. Legay, Mr. Legee. Uh, who says he's in for whatever needs doing, as long as the check clears. Uh, first of all, leaves the group for his meeting with Zar. Uh, back at the bookstore, uh, Dorothy closes shop to talk, or, well, sorry, so she closes the store to talk to 
uh, Percival, uh, with one of her men keeping an eye on him. Uh, while there, he gives her the mind swap spell in exchange for other spells, specifically one to disguise yourself or protect himself from magics. Uh, questioning his motives, uh, he says, for power, basically. She says, there's always a cost, but she'd be happy to initiate him into the Order of the Black Pharaoh as her apprentice. Uh, back at the bookstore, Frank explains the situation to Philip, and uh, Philip suggests for the mustard gas they tie the jars together, or use poop bomb. That'd require a lot of poop. Uh, after much talk about it, Dorothy says the mustard gas would work better, and when Percival arrives, uh, he says it won't be quite effective, but wouldn't guarantee their deaths. Then they decide upon TNT instead, using uh, Percival's connections with the uh, mining company. He submits a work order, and uh, Dicky, Dorothy, and Philip go to pick it up. Uh, after they pick it up, Dicky nearly gets hit by another car, and Philip thinks that they're being followed. Uh, as they're driving, they spot a tree in the middle of the road, and that car is still following them. So Philip pulls out a stick of dynamite, lights it, and tosses it at the car behind them, blowing it up. Still with the tree in the way, uh, Dicky tries swerving out of the way and crashes the car and pops two of the tires. While they are getting out of the car, two cultists pop out from behind the tree. Dickie gets out and makes a target of himself so that they both fire directly at him. But one fires poorly and it goes straight towards the truck. Thankfully, Dorothy moved the TNT just in the nick of time before it got hit. A firefight ensues and uh, Frank fires at one of the cultists and hits while Dorothy runs into attack, Philip moves the TNT out of the way to a safer location. Thankfully, the cultists are poor shots and miss some more as Dorothy runs up to show them a good book to the face. Frank decides to try and intimidate the cultists as he is still Frank Marshall, but uh, doesn't work too well. Philip runs in to attack them as well. Uh, Dor during the fight, Dorothy gets shot so she beats some knowledge into the poor sod that did it to her until she loses her book. Continuing to get shot at, though, Dorothy weaves out a line of fire. Philip runs it up and runs one through with his large knife, draining them of life. Frank grazes the other with a bullet, and Dorothy picks up a pipe and, with an otherworldly power, bashes his face open. Left with the two corpses of cultists and the burning remnants of the truck, uh, Frank rips off the, his, the shirt of one of the cultists to bandage up Dorothy. Uh, unable to fix up the car, the group sees a farmhouse about a quarter mile away. Frank or Philip stays behind with the car and TNT, covering up the TNT with some cow dung so it wouldn't be quite so apparent as Dorothy and Frank go to the farmhouse. Uh, spotting a farm wife, she ushers, uh, being spotted by a farm wife, she ushers them inside and has her daughter Abigail grab some water and towels. She tries to help Dorothy, but doesn't manage to do much. So she sends her daughter off to get the local doctor. And her daughter encounters Philip as he is trying to conceal the bodies on the side of the road. And Philip states that they were trying to kill us, and she doesn't listen too much as she goes off to get the constable as well. While this is all happening, Percival is spending his downtime enjoying himself and servicing his weapon collection. An unexpectedly easy day off. Philip goes back to the farmhouse with TNT in tow, trying to get the attention of the group, but not the farm wife. Doing so, uh, Frank sneaks off outside to talk to him and they go to the barn to formulate a plan of how to get away from the scene. Frank isn't quite about this plan and decides they should just murder everyone since he has a distinctive scar. Philip convinces him though not to, saying if he has two scars, it's an entirely different person. Nobody here has two scars. 
So he sends Frank off to the truck to pry the plates off the back in order to conceal themselves better when he hears the sound of a car engine. It's the constable and the doctor. Frank tells them that there was a freak accident that blew up the car behind them, and two guys just popped out from behind the tree and started attacking us. Back at the farm, Dorothy is uh, being pampered by the farm, woman, farm wife, giving her version of the story, saying that she was just giving her recipe for spotted dip when everything just happened. After the constable and doctor arrive, the doctor fixes Dorothy up, and Dorothy plays off as a someone in shock and can't remember anything, which they believe. Frank once more plays the victim, saying that they were just driving the car and the car behind them blew up, and they believe his testimony. The constable offers a ride to the duo, and Dorothy steps out to get a spot of air, going to the barn where Philip is, still waiting to heist the car. Frank, still inside, convinces the farm wife that they should just borrow the car and let her daughter drive it back. In the barn, Dorothy asks how Philip feels about just murdering everyone. What is up with us and murder? Vehemently against it, uh, learning the car had busted, he rigs the car to work as the daughter comes back to the barn with Frank. Uh, she's completely forgotten about Philip, and realizing that the events of today are an awful thing on her mind, Philip memories away and gets her a bottle of the strongest stuff when they get to the train station. When they finally do get to town, they call Percival and ask for another car, which he comes to deliver himself. When he's there, we let him know that we think that the other cult, that the cultists knew that we were coming. So we keep an eye on our tail, and we don't see anybody following us this time. But while on the way back, Percival also crashes the car, and we all jump out just before the TNT goes off. All right, excellent. Uh, so uh, this is where everyone is. Uh, Godric. Uh, would you be hanging out with any of these people at the moment? Godric would most likely, if he has the opportunity, to hang out with Frankie because of <gasps> what happened. I'm still here. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> with Frankie, in order to get his hand on the spell that he saw, because he knows that's like, yeah, that's what happened. So he would do pretty much anything to try to get his hands on it. Uh, remind me which spell you saw? Uh, the swapping. Mind exchange. Mind yeah. exchange. Because we were with his son, and it was Frankie's body, and we're like, no, what's happening? Or Dickie, I'm so confused with that swap thingy. <laughs> who was who in the room with, uh... Not Frank, uh, Dave's character that I don't see on Fantasy Ground. Oh, it's because I didn't jump back in yet. Oh. <laughs> Remember, that's a Percival. Yes, with Percival. Okay. Sorry, I am wrangling my camera right now. It's hellish. I don't like it. Everything hurts. Must banish the gremlins. Only there was some way for us to banish the gremlins. Right? I know. There's an easy way to banish gremlins. You just feed them after midnight. I feel like that's not a bad idea. No, works every time. The rest of the city goes to hell, but you're fine.
All right. Uh. Yay! Uh, god damn it. All right. Have a vampire cupcake. Um. I'm so sorry. I just put your cover. Uh, well, anyway, so until the gremlins resolve, um, So, I'm so sorry, Elaine. Um, oh, that's cool. Don't worry. Which, which spell were you looking for? Uh, I think it was the Mind Switch spell. Okay. That he did. Or Mind Swap. Everybody loves the Dicky Switchy spell. Dicky Switchy. <laughs> okay. Is that what it's called? He said that, that is Dicky Switchy I mean, spell. <laughs> it's what it's called in this game. That's what I have on my sheet. That's what I've named it. Dicky Switchy. Uh, yeah, so, um, and remind me if you actually found the spell. Well, I, I had taken notes in my diary of the pictograms, the circles, the runes, but the missing components was the verbal part of the spell. That's why I'm, uh, <clears throat> kind of tagging along and trying to pry it out of them nicely. Okay. Uh, so we will say that uh, you have shown up uh, at uh, at Percival's house um, and you are told uh, by the people uh Uh, what you are told uh, is that he is out, but he is expected back soon. Uh, and uh, like any good servant, they have strict instructions um, to make anyone uh, you know, to make friends of Percival's welcome. So you're invited inside, you're given uh, tea and biscuits uh and essentially invited just to you know chill out for a while all right that's exactly what i do sit down if there if he has a library i will pick up any random book and just start reading a little and as i wait tea crumpet and uh okay. book oh uh, there's a lot of cats here like a lot um, as in like enough to be like this is overkill cat like yes Many, oh, many. Mr. Puss. Oh, God. Someone likes cats, yeah? Okay. Crazy cat, right. man. Uh, and so what sort of, what sort of books, Percival, would you have in your library? Um, sort of available to guests. I mean, <laughs> I can't imagine a book you probably, I mean, given, I mean, with the limit, not, you know, so much space that he has for library. Like, nothing really truly, like, occult, occulty. Mm -hmm. um, like, novels of the time period, class, you know, I guess what would be considered classics even in the 1920s things of those nature 
I don't know if encyclopedias were a thing yet. Like, all that kind of stuff. But nothing that could truly be construed as, like, an occult manual, like an occult book or even material. Okay. So, and with that, we will turn the camera back to our other hapless protagonists. Uh, you have all taken some level of damage, thanks to the uh, TNT going boom. Uh, the car is just gone. It's mangled <coughs> scrap now. Uh, and you are on a relatively busy English highway. Uh, also, just to note, it is 7 o'clock in the evening on Thursday the 19th of February. The new moon and cult ritual will be this Sunday. So, how do you respond to this setback? Frankie immediately starts throwing his hands up into the air, screaming, No! <laughs> okay. Well, just that. I mean, would we wait for the police? Yeah, probably. I mean, the car just oh, no. exploded. Frankie's getting out of here. I mean, I don't know what the police response time is, considering there's not like a cell phone where somebody can just call them. Um, so I guess, is it possible, to, can we flag down another car? Can I flag like, down a Philip car? Philip is just going to do that. He's going to just start walking out to the side and just thumb, thumb it. You know, I, shru I really shouldn't let y'all drive anymore because I think y'all are just crazy. Y'all can't figure out how to stay on the road. I mean, it just don't work like that. Y'all you you gotta drive. Are you are you a skilled uh, driver, Mr. McGee? I ain't no, you know, uh, race car driver, but you know, I certainly think I can keep myself between two lanes. Very good, yes, I thought I could too, but apparently not. Um, I mean, I do find myself in need of a driver if you'd like a job for the moment. Uh, how much you pay? Because, I mean, the whole reason, like I said, I'm doing this crazy shit with y'all because I'm expecting a good payout. Ooh, what would somebody make in 1920s England? Ten dollars a day. Uh, you, you're not going to be able to afford me because I keep on doing crazy jobs to get obscene amounts of money and then blatantly throwing it all into the wind. So whatever you say, Philip's probably going to turn down and want more. All right. So the police will be here eventually, along with an ambulance. Uh, and they will have a lot of questions, like, why were you moving the TNT? There's no way they would know that there was TNT there. Something made the car blow up. It's, it's a, these newfangled automobile contraptions. Right. Y'all can, can say whatever you like. I'm going to be uh, booking it back to your house, sir. Um, I'm going to presume that they're going to be all right with me showing up without you if y'all don't come with me. I'm still just sitting there thumbing it. The servants have strict instructions not to let anyone in at this point without you. I'm absolutely lying through my teeth. Then you better be right here with me asking for a ride. Well, I've already started... Percival has also started trying to flag down a... a car. Hey, yeah, you can uh, pretty easily find a, a couple friendly, helpful motorists who are like, Oh my god, what happened here? Oh, you're hurt! Yes, I would be very grateful if you could uh, drive me back to London. To my to my home. Yeah. Speaking of that, how far away are we from London now? I'd say you're only about a half hour drive from the heart of the city, so you're still kind of on the outskirts, but a little more populated than 
the rural area where you had all of your former adventures. Yeah. Just hoping to thumb our eye. And about as far as y'all can take us. All right. Uh, I would us like. Here. I would like one person to give me a luck roll, please. I was going to say, can I use charm to charm my way to a ride? Uh, this one is going to be luck in specific. Screw it, I'm doing it. I failed hardcore. I would like to reverse those dice. Because <laughs> then I would have succeeded by two. Oh, sorry. Um, Alright, so they only have room for one person. Ah, oh, well, that should be Yes, um, actually, if you wouldn't mind taking Miss, uh, my, my good friend Miss Fandrick here, back. Okay, and do you tell them to take Dorothy to, well, first off, uh, do you accept the ride, Dorothy? I do. Okay, uh, and so, uh, do you give her the address of your estate in London? <coughs> Oh yeah, I mean Dorothy. I've done. I, I, I'm assuming that Dorothy and Percival have known each other for a bit, given that you know she owns a bookstore and he's you know. So she probably has been to the estate to deliver books, if not for like you know book club. The 1920s version of book club. Um, so yes, uh, Miss Fendrick, if you wouldn't mind going to to the estate and then uh, having having one of the men send a call. I will start. Well, I'm going to start walking. Gladly. Thank you so much. She just hobbles on in. Right. Uh, and so they're like, "Are are you sure you don't want us to um, take you to the hospital?" I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine. All right, so uh, you are taken to Percival's house, uh, where Godric is waiting for you. Okay, I'll make my way inside. Yeah, and uh, you're shown to the same library. Uh, you are also provided uh, the same refreshments, tea, biscuits, uh, little finger sandwiches. Um, and I'm like, yes, I, I don't know what's uh, keeping Lord Harrington, but he, he should be back soon. That's Actually. fine. Oh, oh, hello, my name is Godric Schultz. You are? Dorothy. Dorothy oh. Fandrick. Oh, pleasure meeting you, Mrs. Fandrick. I am, uh, like I said, Mr. Godric Schultz. Um, Mr. Harrington is in need of another vehicle. Speak of. I apologize. Vehicle for what? For a ride. Yes. There's been a mishap. Oh, please explain. Is everything all right? Actually, is there one of one of his workers around? I believe so, yes. Uh, yeah, there's servants around. <laughs> there's a bell. <laughs> Trying to call one of the servants. Uh, yeah, so a uh, servant shows up and like, uh, yes, can I help? Mm. Uh, yes. Uh, apparently... Uh, Mr. Har Har Harrington needs a ride, a, a vehicle. There was a mishap. Uh, Mrs. Uh, Fran Fran Frandrick. Yes, Fandrick. F Fandrick, I do apologize. Says that uh, the, he needs a ride. Is there another vehicle available? Uh, yeah, and I, I assume that Percival would have given... Uh, oh, goodness, do they still use signet rings? Uh, Percival <laughs> definitely has a signet ring. All right. 
Plus, they know, I mean, they know Dorothy, so, it, you know. But yeah, I'll, I would have given her the ring. Right. So, with that in hand, the servants are like, okay, you, you clearly did come from uh, Lord Harrington. Uh, so, they provide you with a very nice car and driver. Um, and so, Godric, you go with her. Um, yes, I do. Hey. Uh, and so, what do the other three of you do? at the roadside for about the hour it's going to take for them to for Dorothy to leave pick up the car and then come bring you back oh, I'm still trying to thumb a ride and walking towards the town as we go I'm okay. leaving the scene alright well Give me let me rephrase that if everyone else is I'm leaving the scene because okay. I'm still paranoid that they're following us. Okay. Uh, so seeing Philip Legai want to wander off, uh, how, how do Percival and uh, Frankie Schwarm Marshall react? Uh, Frankie immediately is just like, ah, yeah, good idea. You gotta scram. Uh, uh, but before he scrams, he searches around a bit to see why we might have crashed, like if there's an oil slick or if there's some like cat somewhere that just lost a tail or something. Give me a spot hidden. Ooh. Spot hidden twine. <coughs> I'm good at spot hidden. Okay, where's my... There it is. That's a failure. Yeah, Percival's probably just a shitty driver. Bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, okay. yeah, that's very so, yeah, it's fine. It's not that good. I'm just saying, <laughs> you failed the roll, plus you didn't fail again. <laughs> but it was normal driving. Uh, gotta Sometimes get out of here. There's just random tentacles in the middle of the road. Random tentacles, no. Yeah. People are saying I'm quiet. Get... Mel said I'm quiet. Am I any better now? Uh, you sound fine in the Zoom. Yeah. Okay. And Dave, it's those damn land squid. It is. All right. So all three of you are leaving the scene of the accident. Yes. Yeah, I started walking back. Okay. Uh, you are moving a little slower than normal because you all took damage in the explosion. Um, and, you know, every so often uh, someone will stop and be like, but God, are you all right? Oh, we're, we're fine. Fine. Thank you for you your... You use a lift. Yeah, your clothes are all burned and bloody oh, don't forget about the dirt but yes um, um, do you have room in there for three travelers uh, give me a luck roll one person please you and your luck roll should kill it I will <laughs> go with it this time All right. and I rolled a six extreme nice. success nice okay they do in fact have enough room for you, but with an extreme success, um, Dorothy's all on her way. So, well, if you two, if, uh, Mr. I'm not sure, Mr. Marsha, uh, Mr. Legee, if you want to uh, head back, I will, uh, continue on and wait. I assume, uh, Miss Fendrick has sent a car. Wouldn't be proper to have them come out, not be here. Well, I mean, if you're wanting to wait, then uh, wait have second. fun with that, sir. Mm -hmm. I will enjoy the luxuries of a shower. Is that good? If it's all the same to you, I think I'll uh, I'll stay behind just to 
make sure you don't, you know. Yes, I, I understand. Well, you boys enjoy the warmth of that glow. I'll see you back at the manor, you said? Ah, uh, yes. Fancy. All right, have fun. Enjoy your car ride. All right. Uh, so they, uh, the people who drive you, pretty much insist on dropping you off at the hospital because uh, you clearly need medical attention. Um. Ain't too bad. I've been kicked by horses that hurt more than this, but I mean, hey, eh, I, I got to write that bill off, so all right. So I let him take me to the hospital. Okay. Uh, very, let me. Okay, uh, that's a terrible roll. Uh, gain one hit point. Uh, Philip and Frankie, were you along for the ride as well? No, they stayed behind. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so gain one hit point as they uh, have clearly not treated many... Um, exploding TNT car wounds before. Uh, sir, I think you're doing this wrong. I mean, I don't mean to tell you how you're supposed to do this, but aren't you supposed to put the bandage where I got burnt? Right. Uh, so we then shift back to uh, the car. Uh, Dorothy and Godric um, you have a driver, a chauffeur, uh, who drives you to, again, the scene of the accident. Now, during the time in which you will be waiting for Dorothy and Goddard to re-arrive, um, an ambulance will show up, the bobbies will show up, uh, and they will start asking questions. And so, and I'm like, my goodness, what happened here? Well, we had walked away, I thought. That was the plan. Like, I was going to start walking towards my manor, even though I knew it was going to take a long time, just so that we were away from the explosion and everything. Right, Same time, it. though. Like, two people walking down the street, covered in blood and shrapnel away from an accident that seems i mean it's i figured it was dark it's london cars didn't really have great headlights yet now. yeah so are we we get stopped by the police the bobbies um, so you are deliberately trying to avoid being noticed so give me a um stealth rolls please i mean to be clear like i'm not like hiding or anything. I'm just walking down the road. I just was walking away from the from the explosion. If they stop, you know, if the cops and an ambulance see us on the side, you know, walking on the side of the road, I'm not going to be like, oh no, a car, and dive off into a ditch. Would you still like me to roll stealth, or? Uh, what well, doesn't matter. Frankie failed. Uh, yeah. <laughs> as did I anyway, so it doesn't matter. All right. Uh, so, uh, either making no effort to stay hidden, uh, or trying and not really doing a good job, um, eventually a car pulls up next to you. Uh, it is the uh, 1920s English equivalent of a cop car. There are two bobbies inside, and they're like, Oi! Are you the fellows what with the car back there? Um, yes, actually, uh, we are. Just... 
What on earth happened? <coughs> I don't. I don't know. I lost control of the vehicle and you know skidded off, and the, the thing just exploded. You know, I'm going to have to write a sternly worded letter to the manufacturer about that. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, give me uh, either. I'll let you choose either charm, fast talk, or persuade. Oh, I'm using uh, charm. You... Okay. Uh, to essentially sweet talk the police, like. <laughs> Oh my god! It's gonna be one of those nights. I am not spending 29 luck. Okay. Can he push the roll in any way, shape, or form? <laughs> you can absolutely... Uh... No, no, you no, can no, absolutely no. push the roll. I mean, I um, really feel like it, maybe it had to do with the petrol, now that I think about it. I don't know. That's what I get for letting one of the servants fill it up. Blasted. Blasted man. Okay. <laughs> Do you want to make it an extreme success? You know what? I will. I will spend one luck. Okay. To make it extreme, just because I failed so hard last time. I feel like I need to spend luck. Servants are trying to kill you. That's what happened. It is. It is. All right. So, uh, because the luck roll was that good, here's what's going to happen. So. The police figure out that you are a member of British nobility, and uh, absolutely a gentleman uh, would never lie about, like, sometimes cars just explode like that. There's nothing anyone can do about it. Uh, and so they offer to give you and your companion a ride home, and because you uh, did decide to make it uh, an extreme success, uh, you will notice Godric and Dorothy and be able to flag them down. And meet back up again. So I'm like, yeah, I, I very much appreciate that, officers. But um, yes, my com one of my uh, my companion um has brought another car for me. So I do I do appreciate the offer, uh, very well. Um, he, uh, you know, um, you know, can I make a donation to the policeman's charity or anything like that for your your time and effort here? Oh goodness! Uh, I actually don't know if I had policeman balls back me, in the day. Me either. Hey, they do now. You're British, first say you're British high society. You can set it up now. That's true. You know what? Uh, yes, for your trouble. Um, uh, what are your names, officers? You know, what? Um, I probably won't remember. But why don't you drop by my manor and I hand them a business card? Um, um, you know, we'll see to it. You're 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 rewarded for your. Your service and excellence here. Uh, yeah, so uh, they they are very grateful, and they're like, "Oh no, no, no!" So civic service is its own reward. Oh, uh, but you sort of you sort of do that like polite British um, like etiquette dance. Yep. Um. Okay, so. We're just going to fast forward a little bit. Uh, Philip, you are discharged. Uh, Godric, Dorothy, Frankie, Percival, you all managed to meet up. It is nine o'clock at night. You are all at Percival's home. Uh... And you have a cult to murder. All right, well, it is... Is everything all right, Mr. Harrington? Um, most decidedly, no. What happened? What uh, happened? Uh, I'll let, um, I'll let, if you don't mind, one of the others can fill you in. Um, uh, well, I must call my physician. Get myself... Is he in bad shape? Like, really bad shape? Not terribly. I have taken. Okay. I have taken four hit points of damage out of fifteen. I am okay. Yeah. 15. Wait, you got yourself a personal physician? 
And I went to a hospital? I didn't tell you to go to a hospital. Why did you? Why did you go you to a hospital? You didn't tell me you got a personal physician. They probably do it a lot better than these guys did. They tried bandaging my leg when I didn't even get burned there. Well, it's not, I mean, it's not like he's here on staff. I have to call him. You're all more than welcome to stay. Uh, guest rooms can be arranged for you if you'd like. Uh, so please uh, make yourself at home. That would be very appreciated. Thank you. And uh, yes, I'm going to go make a phone call now. I go off and call the doctor. Call a doctor. My doctor. Yeah, uh, you absolutely uh, can call a uh, call a physician over. Uh, they'll show up. Um, well, so do you say that it's urgent because it is getting uh, pretty late in the evening? Yeah. Um, how bad did everybody else look? Like, I feel like Percival probably has like some bad scrapes and stuff, but is okay. But how bad is Dorothy and Frankie? Uh, I will leave that up to each character to describe. Uh, Frankie currently has a gash on the other side of his face to mirror the scar okay. that was already there. So you're pretty with beat. several bruises and third degree burns. All right, so you're pretty beat up. Dorothy's wound Six reopens. Dorothy's wounds are what? I'm sorry. Reopens. Okay. So yeah, I will. I will then. Say, yes, um, it is urgent. Um, if you could come right away, um, it's uh, myself and two other patients. Uh, three other patients uh, need medical attention. All right. Go ahead. First of all, give me a credit rating roll. Also, don't forget to tick the little ticky box for your charm. Yeah, uh, I got a uh, hard success. Yeah, you could basically not fail this role. Um, all right, so you lean on your connections and your position in society, uh, and the doctor will make the late night house call uh, because he dare not offend the house of Harrington. Uh, yeah, I'll just uh, wait. Okay, so uh, he will show up about uh, and he he's also a little curious. I'm like, good god, how, how did you get these wounds and these burns? Uh, yeah, so uh, really rather strange driving back uh, from driving back and uh, small road trip and lost control of my vehicle uh, and the darn thing exploded when it went into the ditch. Alright. Uh, go ahead, everyone uh, who is accepting medical care. Uh, the doctor uh, succeeded on his medicine roll, so you can all roll uh, a d3. So, like, just roll a d6 and have it. Uh, I get two HPs back. Yes, restore that many hit points. Does that include me, or did I not get to do it again? <clears throat> uh, I will say because the people at the hospital utterly failed, uh, that the doctor can give you a little extra um, medical care. So yeah, you can roll too. Okay, thank you. One more point, one more point. Yeah, and did you want to roll as well, Dorothy? Oh, you are muted. Noise. Hello, did... Hello? Oh, there you go, all right. Okay, okay. <laughs> I forgot what was I supposed to be answering? What was the question? Oh, 
Uh, you already rolled, so you rolled a five, so take three hit points back. Okay. Uh, and in the evening, uh, you have a nice chance to rest and to sleep. So in the morning, you will also all regain one more hit point. Uh, but before before that happens, is there anything that you would like to accomplish or discuss? So, uh, Mr. Harrington, <coughs> perhaps this time let let's have uh, I'll just use the word professionals bring us the tea and the tea because uh, we uh, kind of did a bad job twice. Do you, you think we could get them to ship it here? little suspect that we'll still have to get it from here to the location, but uh, yes, I can have them bring it here. Say we're doing some uh, landscaping. Well, I mean, or we could just have it shipped to, uh, oh, oh, how far away is that factory from where we're going to use this stuff? I think it's pretty far out of character. I don't think it's in the same direction. Is that correct, Keeper? Keeper? I'm sorry, what's the question? How far away is the factory from uh, Miser House? I had to sneeze. Um, am I going to sneeze again? Nope, false alarm. Okay. You bless uh, you. Thank you. Uh, it is about a four hour drive because uh, Henson Manufacturing is to the east and Miser House is to the west. Okay, so okay, well, scratch oh, that. I'm sorry, uh, reverse that. Uh, it is Derby and Henson Manufacturing that are in the west of England, and Miser House is on the east coast. Okay, either way, scratch that idea. Uh, but maybe we could, uh, I mean, you, you apparently are loaded. Don't you have a place where we could drop it off somewhere where it's a bit closer? I mean, I guess that way we don't have to drive quite, you know, so far. We don't have a very good track record with uh, moving this stuff around ourselves. No, no, we don't. Um, I don't know. Keeper, is there any possibility that I have something close to Miser House to put this stuff? Oh, uh, are you thinking to have it delivered to uh, Wilton on the Nays, which is where Miser House is located? Yeah. Like that or something, like someplace slightly, you know, respectably closer in distance than here in London. That's a volatile distance away. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you could, uh, you could certainly have a package, uh, sent to the local post office. Nice. All right, then I set that up. All right, uh, so the TNT will be waiting for you when you want to arrive at Miser House. But uh, now that you, ha now that you have the TNT, what is your plan for using it? Uh, I'm leaving that up to uh, Mr. Lee, our explosive expert. Well, uh, I I got a great plan, guys. So what we can do is we can take these sticks of dynamite, and uh, if we put a whole bunch of like nuts and bolts in a bag around them. And just have that wick sticking out then when it blows up all that stuff will go everywhere and it should do a lot of damage to everyone around it beyond just you know it blowing up so we don't want to be near it when it blows up you know like shrapnel i mean 
Oh. I don't know. How are you going to detonate it then? Uh, seeing that it's TNT, I thought it had a fuse. Oh, yes, but, uh, still, uh, are, are you just gonna, like, do, like, a hundred yard fuse? Because that's a lot of failure points for a fuse. No, no, I was thinking more like, uh, since we're going to have cult robes, we just have, like, a little bit longer of a fuse, and then be able to just walk right into there, having the it in our robes, and then just kind of light it, drop it in places, and walk away. All right, so. Not you the best can... plan, but not a bad plan. Give me an idea roll, please. Okay. I mean, I love this plan. This plan is foolproof. I'm all about creating terrible plans that will somehow kill us all. No, I don't want to plan drag the entire with box. It. Uh, I'll spend the four points to make that a success because that so close to being a 99. <laughs> okay. The thing is, is um, with that plan, you would, especially wanting to use shrapnel, you would absolutely get caught in the blast. Even with an extension on the fuse? So, the thing is, is that the fuse is going, it's going to be long and it's going to be noticeable. So you're going to have to figure out some way to detonate uh, the TNT. Now, one thing you could do, uh, because you've already learned that Zara Shafiq has the mind control spell, uh, you could try being like, hey, can you condition one of your mooks to light the fuse? But then Zara would be like, okay, but you're gonna blow me and my followers up, too. Oh, oh, hey, guys, guys. Okay, I got, I got a better idea now. So if we were to, you know, like, since we, we know where this place is, right? So, uh, if we were to, you know, hide this stuff around the area and we find one of those mookier guys. You, you've been talking about, you know, brain swapping things, right? So if we do a brain swappy thing with one of these guys for like, you know, 15 seconds, and we leave the lighter next to it. They can light it for us. And then you bring swap back. And we aren't even there. We just gotta hide it. So essentially, this is a 15 second dick switch. Uh, <laughs> if that's what you wanna call it, yeah. I, I mean, yeah. Is that what you're calling this thing where uh, people swap dick switches? Uh, yeah, we I, I'm... call it the dicky switchy. All right. Uh, so, Frankie, I will give you this for free because you've used it. You've used the spell so often. Uh, you know that you cannot control how long you stay in someone else's body. Um, and uh, give me an occult roll for more information. That's a failure. Okay. I don't know anything about this. Oh boy. Okay. Uh, I, I will say you have uh, 
you have the whole text of the spell. That is everything you know about the spell. So you can go over it and sort of figure out how you would make this work. Godric is there, right? Yes, you are all present together. Uh, I believe that it would be in everybody's interest to be aware of this spell, being able to perform it, just in case. Would it be possible to share this with everybody? No. Well, he opens and... the. I open my diary. I already have most of it. I'm missing some few components, and I've noticed that you, sir, seem to have what I'm missing. <laughs> you really like. <laughs> no, you you don't you don't know what you're what you're asking. You don't know. And I've been able to decipher most of it, but the verbal component is missing. I do believe Mr. Harrington has access to it. You have access to it. Possibly Mrs. Doherty, since uh, she mentioned it. I believe if everybody would be able to perform it, it could open doors, possibilities fighting this cult other than blowing shit up as you Americans say I mean Mr. Marshall he does have a good point I mean he's asking I don't want to I don't want to know none of this stuff because y'all that, that's craziness right there but I mean I mean y'all y'all can do whatever you want exactly it's craziness it's madness. It cost me my son. He, he disowned me. His own father. I don't even know who I am anymore. It's... If I were to teach anyone this spell, they'd have to understand something very important. Go ahead. That spell is a curse and not not for the person that's being used on. Well, I do believe that this cult is uh, doomsday, possibly. And I do believe that going through this curse could be a necessary evil for a person to be able to vanquish this evil. And for one, I am willing to sacrifice myself for the greater good. Wouldn't you say, yeah? There's a solid 20 seconds of Frankie horrified that someone wants to learn this spell to be a sacrifice. <laughs> and it immediately, the paranoia starts going, the gears start turning. It's visible on his face the entire time of just, oh, he's going to try and mind swap somebody, somebody in this group maybe. But what if it's me? Wait, I don't favor him now. I'm safe. And, and it's that... all visible. That, like, click. Fine, then I'll teach you. And so, Frankie, you have figured out one of the keys. Who in the cult could you mind swap with? See, Philip doesn't know this portion of it. <coughs> but if you mention it out loud, out of character, Percival's totally working it up with uh, the Zara. Uh, well, so Frankie, do you mention that bit out loud? Before I teach you this spell, it's important you know what the curse is, Godric. Very well, so please explain. It only works on people who love you, who favor you, who are close to you. How you can't just emotional... use it on a stranger. Oh, how deep of an emotional tie do you have to hold with that person in order to switch? Now, Godric. 
You're asking big existential questions here. I don't know how to quantify love. What about platonic love? I, I suppose I mean, a strong friendship does count. You were able to switch into Alex briefly. The my that thought crosses Frankie's head, just mind, and he shudders, remembering, "Oh yeah, that happened." <laughs> Not gonna mention that. I mean, she was playing a minor. It was absolutely platonic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was still <laughs> freaky. Uh, platonic love, I suppose, works. Uh, familial definitely does. And it does not work both ways, right? I mean, if I love the individual, does it work, or does the individual need to love me? Whoever it is, they have to love you. And I write all of this down in my, uh, my diary. Uh, I feel like I've made a great mistake here today. Well, it depends. <laughs> all right. So uh, let me get you the text for that spell, Godric. Uh, but now that you know the spell, how are you going to use it? That's part of the plan phase. Because I'm sure there's a thing we can do with this to literally take him, rip him from the inside out. Talking about the cult here. I mean, I'm a fan of just uh, Mr. Legay's plan, Mr. Legay, sorry, uh, plan, using the explosives. Yes, but with explosives, that can be collateral damage. There could be innocent people, possibly. We don't know. Innocent who? They're all in a cult. There could be prisoners in the cult. There could be people being brainwashed into the cult. And they are innocent. We do not know. Am I wrong yeah. or right? Does anybody else know right, who is it? within the cult? Know that we're there for a specific individual. Mm. So I mean we could just simply take that one individual out. That was, our, that that was our deal. That if we are targeting simply one individual instead of using an explosive, can't we use poison? Well, they were talking about using poison gas. Gas, but I mean, we literally. We're not using, for the last time, we are not using gas. I've said this multiple times. And that was Alistair's plan, and he's dead now. Alistair's plan is my plan, too. You want to use gas? I gathered you all here. We're using everything at our disposal. That cult does not survive. Well, you Whether know they what, all though. die to do, uh, tomorrow or not, they all have to die at some point. Uh, I do got a good. I, I do have a good idea for that though. If uh, we do have this gas stuff, and they are all going to run away, uh, what if uh, we set it up so that the gas was in the middle, so they all can run around on the outside? And then we got the explosives on the outside to blow them all up as they're running away. I don't know. I'm, I'm just, you know, spouting out ideas now because, I mean, I don't know what this place even looks like. I mean, ultimately, the plan is to get to Gap again. Just to... Marshall Schwarm Schwarm Marshall. He wants to take out the entire cult. I don't have a problem with that, obviously. It seems like uh, Mr. Marshall, your plan, and Mr. Schultz's plan are you're at odds with Mr. Schultz regarding killing everyone. And, uh, 
Miss oh, Fandrick, what? what what is your opinion on all this? I've said it once and I've said it before. If you kill one man, you kill a dozen. They can only hang you once. <laughs> Fair, good point. Nobody gets it. Plus, I mean, if these people are cult members, I don't think they're probably good people to begin with. So, I mean, might as well, you know, pull out it, pull it out by the roots, as they say. Yes. So, Frankie has an advantage in that Edward Gavigan does not think of him as a threat. So, Frankie, you will be able to get close to Gavigan. While the whole conversation is going on, Frankie sort of secludes himself, verbally speaking. He goes through the whole idea of, yeah, I could go stab Gavigan, make sure for a fact he dies. We gas the whole place, we blow it all to smithereens. Worst case scenario, I just need to swap bodies again. I just need to find someone to swap with. So he gets this thousand yard stare for a moment. Well, uh, I forget if we did this on camera, uh, but you succeeded in an occult role. Uh, you are locked into Frankie's body. Right. Just forgot. Wait, no more dicky switchies? No more dicky switchies. Uh -oh. Un until Frankie does a lot of work to devise a new version of the spell. There's only how many days until the the cult meets? Uh, this is happening on Thursday night, and the cult meets on Sunday. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Three days. Well, technically, more like two. Well, we know where they are going to meet, yeah? Yes, we do. If we need more time, all we can do is simply disrupt the meeting, force them to reschedule. Yeah, the meet. Wait, did they tell us? Did you guys tell us that the meeting is supposed to be on the moon? Oh, on the moon. <laughs> Full moon. <laughs> full moon. Oh, full moon. Oh, full moon. Oh, full On the full moon. Yeah. On the full moon. Night of the full moon. How do we get there? It's not that esoteric. This, this is actually Final Fantasy three. <laughs> uh, I honestly oh. don't know. I told you that. So, if they need the full moon to do the ritual, we can try to disrupt it instead of wiping everybody out. So you, you're talking about blowing up the moon instead? We're gonna need a lot more right, teams we're, for that. We're not blowing up the moon. Nobody is Elon Musk here. <laughs> I was thinking Piccolo Dragon Ball Z. I mean... Yeah. Uh, but anyway, uh, how you decide you want to kill Gavigan and or Zara Shafi and or the rest of the cult uh, is entirely up to you. Uh, I am just going to uh, adjudicate and let you know like you think that might work you think that probably won't uh, I will tell you first of all you're pretty sure that you could reach out to Zara and say uh, this is our plan can you pull uh, this trigger at this point uh, during the ritual? As long as roughly half the cultists survive, she'll probably go along with it. Because uh, she clearly... So Zara wants the cult to still be there, 
with her in charge. Mm -hmm. So you have a box of TNT, you have the jars of uh, chemical weapons that Alistair uh, was working on before he died. Uh, I would also let people make any number of rolls uh, to figure out if anything else is possible. I mean, aerial bombardment, you probably can't do that. Damn you, Alex. You stole our bombardment. <laughs> Would have been possible. Hmm. Wait, could it? Wait. There, there are airplanes. Right. Yeah, I mean, there are most definitely yeah. airplanes. Airplanes. Yes, but you have money, like nobody's business. Are you really thinking of dive bombing TNT? Could we rent a like, two-seater airplane? Uh, who's gonna fly it? If Canada is operating good heavy machinery, I could do it. <laughs> you, you'd really need a <laughs> pilot. Yeah, I'm not one of those rich guys that actually took up uh, flying yet? Cliff, I think, actually could have could have fly a plane, if I remember correctly. <laughs> Not great, <sighs> but he had pilot. <laughs> but yeah, not for a simple person. And no, we're not. I'm not buying a plane. It's just renting. Aw, I'm not renting a plane either. I mean, if you bought a plane, that would make it real easy to get to China. Or Australia, oh, yes. or Egypt. Okay. Let me clarify. I'm not buying a plane <laughs> to drop TNT out of, or dynamite out of, to blow up a bunch of cultists. Buying a plane to, like, and hiring a pilot to fly us places, that's a different story. Yeah, I mean, and that that's the key, is that you could definitely buy the plane. Yeah. You can't really buy the pilot and convince him to co commit war crimes against his own country. No, I mean, <laughs> probably not. I don't think even one of my old war buddies would do it for me, but... We know what type of ritual they will be doing. What is the point of the ritual? The meeting. The cult meeting. What are they planning to do? Do we know? Uh, a cult rolls, please. Hey, I succeeded. Uh, I remember. Do I click on the word? Uh, the number box. The number box, right? Uh, no, I'm not spending that much luck to succeed with my five occult. It's hard success. Okay. Uh, so, uh, Percival, uh, you have gathered enough information. Uh, especially when you uh, met Alistair, uh, that this is a ritual of human sacrifice. Okay. Uh, and Godric, uh, with your hard success, uh, you would know, especially because it's on the night of a new moon, this is something uh, very, very dark. Um, and essentially they are propitiating some kind of dread deity. Oh. Uh, and Dorothy, Is did you want to make that roll as well? Is it a summoning? Do I, can I make, like, with all the information, can he deduce and put things together and go like, oh, wait a minute, this is what they're trying to do? Uh... you got a hard success um it is not a summoning it is a regular ritual so it's right. essentially like mass you okay. go there to get good with god okay 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 
Would make concern here. What other spells do we do you have available other than the Dicky switching? Uh. So the only spell that everybody knows here is the Dicky switching. We we really really need to change the name. Uh. <laughs> y'all, y'all got a bunch. you got, you got a bunch of books and stuff that y'all don't know what they say. Hello there. Personally, I know no act. I don't know any spells. I've seen Sadly, Mr. Schwarm use this ability. Cliff before. burned a lot of the spells. Uh, but one thing that Zara did suggest to you when you met with her is that there might be more occult tomes uh, at the Penhew Foundation or at Gavigan's house. That was when I met with her, right? Yeah, and so you could try breaking in again. Uh, so Gavigan is probably at Neeser house right now, which means he's not at the Penhew Foundation. He's at his house now. We just go to his house right now. Go on. Uh... I mean, yeah, we could. Like, yeah, we. You could. Yeah, you I'm absolutely Marshall. could. Yeah. yeah, I'm. I could. Yeah. Get in. All right, get in the van. Go, get in the truck. <laughs> it's just fine. We're going <laughs> right now. And <laughs> got time to explain. Grab, grab my rifle. Uh. So wait, y'all now now want to leave this cult and just oh. kill off one guy rather than destroying the whole dang thing? To be clear, Percival did not actually say that. Uh, Dave was saying, That's I got a gun. Good I got a gun. I'll go get it. <laughs> Just get him and shoot him. I mean, right. that can definitely occur to anyone here. That's fine. Yeah. Like, perhaps he's got a hunting rifle above the mantle that puts the idea in Frankie's head. Frankie owns a rifle. Or Dickie did, at least. Did you bring it from America? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Like stuff in my luggage. Where I was like, is it just in your hotel room right now? Probably. <laughs> Mate comes in my... to do turn down service. Rifle in the corner. If my occult is high enough to know that when in, within a cult, most of the cultists are just pawns used by the cult leader to reach his goals, and that most pawns are expendable. So, do I need to make a roll for that, or do I know that, considering that most of my research has to do with occult and cults? Uh, no, you, you, you can know that, just to know it. Um, are the rest who, um, let Godric know the nature of the cult? Frankie would have mentioned at one point or another that the cult is based on bullying everyone around you to get to the top of the pyramid. One more time. Was to the, what? I didn't to get to that. the top of the like Me the structure. What? No, you had it right. Pyramid. Yeah, the pyramid. Yeah, because uh, the the cult that you fought in New York. Uh, lying and said that lying was a good thing and you worshipped by telling lies and the cult here is the cult of dominance mm. so most of these people yeah are all pawns they are innocent within this scheme so we need to cut the head of the snake not the entire snake I mean I mean are they truly innocent if they willingly join the cult and have just not had the and they're totally Most okay with to, to... monthly human sacrifice. That's fine. Yeah, I mean, let's face it. They aren't exactly good people. Just because they aren't the biggest bully doesn't mean they ain't bullies. That's true. That's true. That is true. 
bust a whole lot of them, like y'all said, murder people on a monthly basis. Maybe we don't need to murder all of them. I'll concede that. Maybe we can send them all a message they'll never forget. For example? Ah, uh, content warning. Blood and gore. What we do is we take Frank, uh, we take uh, Edward Gavigan. We kill him. We take his entrails. We hang okay. them along all of Miser House like Yule time decorations. We make what remains of Gavigan into a large butterfly in the middle of his dining room area in Miser House. We take blood and we, we paint and, on the walls. And will you be the individual who never will forget. butcher him? Are you mad, sir? Yeah. Anyway, I will get close enough. If if he's in Miza House right now, if he lives there and he's there right now, with maybe a couple people keeping watch, we could go there tonight. They'll find him three days from now. Uh, the one thing that you did learn from Sahra. Or, or when you visited the Blue Pyramid Club, is it is the night of the full moon that the cars show up and transport people to Miser House. That spoken to all of us. I mean, yes. Yeah, so if we want to, if we want to rescue any innocent captives that the cult might have, we uh, we do need to do this on the night of the full moon. I gather. the captives in the basement in cages. Yeah, it's just like we found uh, poor Alice there. So we go tonight, tomorrow night, whatever. We go there, save their new captives, I'll kill Gavigan. Well, no, the captives uh, won't be there until the night of the full moon. Well, were uh, the people you saved there uh, the night of the full moon a month ago? Have you been here a month? I, I don't think they were. I, I never really asked Mr. Crowley as to why he was there, but I don't believe it was uh, due to being a sacrifice for this ritual. Well, what other reason would they have had to hold on to one? Uh, he probably just pissed someone off. And what did they do with people that pissed them off? Sacrifice. Seems like the easiest way to get rid of people. Do we know anyone that is close to to Gavigan? I point. Does he have any... I point at uh, Mr. Marshall. Uh, yeah, so Mr. Marshall. Not. Not necessarily. Hey, hey, I don't guys. know anything about Gavigan. Yeah, I'm close. So you, you, you mentioned. Think they all... Go ahead, Mr. Levine. You think they all leave at the same time after the ritual? Because over the if, bridge. If, if we could just take them all out when they get there or leave and just blow them all up at once as they're leaving. Well, we or should. or if if that doesn't work then we could just rig it so that, you know, we put a long fuse in their cars. They got them spark plugs that have to light. So maybe if the fuse goes to the spark plug and it's got a nice long fuse, then as they're driving home, just kablooey. I so, mean, we'll have, with the person might still die, but and they all do too. But Mr. Harrington, I just said that Mr. Marshall is close to Mr. Gavigan, no? How close would you say that Mr. Gavigan holds you in his favor? Godric, what are you implying? Well, we could take you, Mr. Marshall, tie your body up, gag you, and put a bag over your head. Do a body switch. You can hold Mr. Gavigan, come here, re-switch, and pick up the body. I mean, if you're able to switch with him, it shouldn't be a problem for you to go into his body, come here, re-switch, and then deal with him. 
No. That seems like a dick switch I would rather enjoy watching. Do you believe it? Okay. Don't think, honestly, I don't believe that Mr. Marshall and Mr. Gavin are acquainted um, so well. But and also, uh, don't actually is. Okay. Do we know anyone that is close to Mr. Gavigan that we could switch with or I don't know, meet? And then uh, I would lo- don't like to say the word brainwashed, but uh, try to put in our favor that we can switch and use that to our advantage, like a Trojan horse. Uh, so oh, you already have the Trojan horse in the form of Frankie. Uh, so you're not sure exactly what Gavigan feels towards Frankie, um, but he does know Frankie well enough that Frankie can get, you know, essentially within stabbing range without any issues. Listen, I believe oh, it's we are overthinking it. Oh. Could I make a quick psychology roll for this line of thinking to see if it's accurate, okay? Okay. This is a cult based around bullying. If I manage to take out the top bully, does that make me the top bully? And if I am the top bully, does everyone follow me because of being the top bully? Does that make Uh, any sense? Yeah, no, uh, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, I'm not going to call for a roll. Uh, it does seem like a sound line of logic, and that is probably what Zara Shafiq is trying to do. Uh, I'm just going to say Frankie was sitting down for most of the scene. He gets up from his chair, takes a deep breath in. I think we've been overcomplicating this for a minute. Yes, that's what I just said. I'll say it. This is a cult based around putting other people down. What is the greatest way, the most definitive way to put someone down? <coughs> Bullets. Murder. Yeah. <laughs> the you, strip them, you strip them of the dignity in front of all of their friends and co-workers and leave them a, a wretched mess of emotion. That, that is, is in, the most uh, British uh, thing you've ever said. <laughs> Maybe in high society. Perhaps I can do that too before I, you know, do what I have to do to get on top of the cult. From there, I do what I did to the factory, tell everyone to get lost. Do you really think you telling everyone to get lost is going to work with the, I mean, it barely worked at the factory. Uh, wouldn't that just make everyone go to Zara instead? It would make it not my problem anymore. But the cult would uh, still be there. And then we take out Zara if need be. As far as I'm concerned, we take out Gavigan. Why don't we can deal with the rest of the cult another day. We'll take care of it another day at this rate. Uh, what if instead when you're in charge of the cult, you get them all to come to one spot and then we can just blow them all up there? Mr. Lagai, I know you were a professional. Ah. Uh, I mean... I mean, they're all going to be coming to that spot that y'all mentioned before anyway. Right. But if you kill Mr. Uh, Gavigan, and then you're in charge of the cult, and you show off that you're in charge of the cult, then they all listen to you. And then, like, you can, you know, get them all to go to that spot that they were going to go to anyway. And... Then we blow up that spot as you run away. I have a feeling that you have a unhealthy uh, obsession obsession with blowing things up. Hey, blowing things up is fun. Have you ever done it before? <clears throat> uh, yes, I have. I can't actually. say that I have. No. You should try it sometime. It's really cathartic. Unless, of course, you're right. caught in the explosion. Well, that's why you run fast. All right, so what is the plan? Honestly, I still don't know. After oh, an right. hour of discussion about this, it seems like so, we're back to the original plan of I think blowing everyone right up. Now, I think right now would be a really good time 
to take our 10 minute break uh, and do a little bit of regrouping because uh, uh, y'all do need a plan. I, I love our plan. <laughs> I'm not even sure what it is. That's the plan. That's the plan. That's the thing. The plan, the plan, the so plan is to figure a plan. It. See, they can't the enemy... tell what we're doing if we don't know. Exactly. Make the plan, execute the plan, expect the plan to go off the rails. Throw out the This plan. is how you get your keeper to blow up your car again. <laughs> anyway, we'll see you all in 10 minutes, everybody. All right, all right see you all in 10, everybody.
All right, and we're back, and hopefully not with uh, weird camera issues. Anyway, so uh, to go over what's going on, uh, the cult of the Dark Pharaoh is meeting on Sunday night, the night of the new moon. You have decided that you really, really want to kill Edward Gavigan. Am I frozen again? Yep. I was gonna say I'm in that. hell. Thirty seconds. I'm in hell. This is penance for my sins. All right. So, 
you've decided you want to kill Edward Gavigan. Uh, the thing to decide is, do you want to kill the rest of his cult? Uh, up to and including Zara Shafiq. Once you figure that out, uh, so figure out your goals, and then we can figure out the plan that you're using to achieve those goals. The resources you have right now, a box of TNT, a mind to switch spell, but it will only work on people who like you. Uh, you have uh, the chemical weapons that Alistair was working on before his unfortunate licking to death by Deep One Hybrids. Um, and uh, you have Frankie, who can get close enough to Gavigan to do him a murder. What happened to so. the wheelbarrow and the holocaust book that we had? A wheelbarrow you can get pretty easily. A holocaust cloak is going to be a bit of a longer stretch. Darn. Okay. But it fits so nice. It's so nice. He said I could keep it. And with that, Rachel has decided to leave us. I'm back to Cupcake. I'm sorry. It's okay. Zoom is just really, really hates my camera tonight. What is your camera? I hate Zoom. All right. Uh, so if uh, we're going to have uh, Mr. Marshall here uh, walk up and stab him, Mr. Gavigan, uh, perhaps we should, uh, do we have something we could put on, like, the knife or whatever he uses to make sure that he dies? You know, like, poison or like venom or something? Well, I mean, can we get something like that? I feel that we should, <coughs> pardon me, uh, attempt to rescue, uh, the individuals being transported for sacrifice as well. Uh, uh, Y'all said, uh, said that Y'all uh, said that the you found the person uh, in that house where you say that Mr. Gavin is. So, I mean, no, no. couldn't they'll bring wouldn't they be there? They'll bring in more sacrifices to night out from what we've been told. The other cultists, the other members of the cult. So we're uh, going to be bringing more cultists that will need uh, to be liberated from the cult. Um, I still think, yes, we could still use uh, Mr. Schwann's plan of uh, potentially um, killing Mr. Gavigan and then having him attempt to take over the cult. I'll take over the cult. Uh, I'm certain that if my orders to the cult are uh, that I see what the potential sacrifices are going to be ahead of time at my own location of my choosing, then fairly easy to excuse those sacrifices. Pardon them. We could also split up. Frankie can go kill him. Uh, Mr. Harrington, you and Godric can get the sacrifices and me and Mr. Legee can crashy smashy. Now that's a spell <laughs> I can get behind. Well, you know, as they say, divide and conquer. Just as long as they don't conquer us while we are divided. Who? Sorry, what was that again, Dorothy? Plan crashy smashy. No, but the actual plan, not the not the preposterous name that we. Ah. <laughs> Frankie, he goes and kills Mister um, Gavigan. You and Godric will tend to the sacrifices, or me and Godric can tend to the sacrifices, okay. if you feel as if you are more suited to accompany Mister Legee to kaboom oh no I don't plan to be anywhere near the uh, kaboom as you say um, apologies Mr. Legee but 
Not quite sure uh, everything's going to go off without a hitch there. Of course, it's not going to go off without a hitch. It's going to go off with a giant explosion. Yes. Oh, dear Lord. So, yes, um, either Godric or Dorothy, if you want to accompany Mr. Legee. Uh, and I will help with the Knowing cultists. what I know, knowing what I have learned of the the two of you over the past uh, few days, I have a feeling, I have a, I have a hunch that uh, Dorothy might be better suited to uh, the crashy smashy. You got Hutzbuck, kid. <laughs> you, got, you got Moxie. I read about explosives in a book. Yeah, it must have been one hell of a book. It was very Unfortunately, I'm not of the brawling type, so I should try to attend to the uh, sacrifices. Godric can help them escape, and if anything, uh, if anyone sees them, then uh, Percival. I know you'll be able to handle that. I don't I think we got a solid plan here. All right. So, uh, just so the keeper can understand and put in her notes, uh, tell me step by step your plan and who is doing what. So, let me see if I get this right. Frank is going to go to Miser House. Okay. As on Frank what? Gavigan. Okay. And are you doing this before or on the day of the ritual? I'm going to say the day before the ritual. Okay. Well, I thought we were doing. I thought you were going to kill him the day of the ritual, uh, at the ritual. I mean, th oh, this no, is why many I'm people these to try and stop. Yeah, yeah. Day before the ritual, usurp power of the cult ah, before okay. the ritual can take place. Got it. Uh, Frank gives the order that the sacrifices come to Miser House early. Percival and Godric make sure that they're removed from the area while Philip and Dorothy set up the explosives and everything else. Don't you think them coming early will raise suspicion? So, uh, one thing I will tell you, based on how you met Alistair, uh, it is quite clear that they kidnap their sacrifices ahead of time and just keep them in a cage for a couple weeks before it's go yeah. time. That, that's what Philip was thinking the entire time, yeah. because of what you said. All right, so step one is Frankie goes to Miser House, kills Gavigan. Mm -hmm. How are you going to kill him? Uh, people were saying stabbing, but Dickie never learned how to stab. Uh, Dickie learned how to shoot a pistol. So the plan, get close, gun to the head, coup de gras, just okay. execute Gavigan. All right. Uh, I don't think anyone knows what poisons should be used to poison people. Well, it just seems faster and easier and more dramatic for and usurping. Honestly, fewer failure points. Because this is the whole ah. thing. It's like there are various failure points in any plan, and uh, a good plan has as few as possible. So, all right. Frankie goes to Muser House the day before the ritual. He's going to try and shoot Gavigan. Uh, hopefully he gets lucky and Gavigan cannot attack back. Uh, <laughs> yeah, what do you plan to do if um, Mr. Gavigan doesn't die so easily? I mean, you 
could bring one uh, of us along as a. Uh, well, mm-hmm. I'm sure they know about they know about uh, like Mr. Percival, right? Well, I, I'm sure Mr. Gavigan, even if um, I don't recall ever personally meeting the man, but um, I'm sure he's heard of me and has seen my picture in the papers. Or at least one of us say that we were trying to, you know, mess with the. Uh, you worked at a factory. You're bringing them to him. That way, you got another person there to shoot with you. We just have, you know, fake tied up. Mister Legay, you, you're you're a professional. Would you like the honors of joining me? to go and stab and shoot a cult leader who has caused suffering to tens, if not hundreds of people. I mean, well then, who's going that to sounds... the explosives? We'll be in Miser House once Gavigan is dead. Oh, yes, yes. We are planning to blow up Miser House, of course. So... Once Gavigan is dead, I'll be able to let Dorothy in without any questions asked, no answers given. Along with the rest of these. Yeah, yeah. I'm okay with uh, killing a cult later. That sounds like a good plan. So you will be pushing me along in and drag me up to Mr. Gavigan while he's distracted looking at me. You shoot him. I break my bindings. And then if he's still, you know, inclined to stay alive, I can stab him. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But then, I'm sorry, I'm still a bit foggy. Then what are we doing about the cult itself? Well, they're gonna all show up there the next day, right? So we can just blow them all to hell. So we just plan on staying at Miser House overnight? With it gives us a day of preparation. With ve- and if I remember, there were there were guards outside that we had to get by. That with a lot. Lo- specifically had to get by you and Dorth. But now no, I you're mean, working for me, Frank Marsh. When we were there, right? You you were there, you do remember this. I was there. And we're going Dickie to be trucking in and if I remember that bridge that bridge did not look sturdy enough to take a truck full of dynamite across. And we'll split it among two trucks, three trucks. I mean Di- dynamite is not that heavy. You can easily move the dynamite across the bridge. I mean, you could also blow up the bridge with the dynamite. But still, we are going to be staying at Miser House an overnight waiting for the cultists. Yeah. Okay. I see no reason why that's bad. <laughs> Just, yeah, it seems a bit. If I'm in charge of Miser House. How could it possibly back? Seems a bit off. That's all. Staying there, dead body and all. Well, I mean, if he's the cult leader, then couldn't he tell whoever you know, cult leader, servant people that Mr. Gavigan has clean up the body? Well, yeah, I guess then there is no that's... body. I suppose that's true. And he'd be playing the part because, I mean, a cult leader doesn't clean up their own bodies. So we, so we go in a day early. We kill You kill Mr. Gavigan. Not we, you. Um, the rest of us. Then we get the... We get the prisoners out. And then we just wait for the cult to show up that day and then, what, blow up the building? Yeah. Put them inside. I'm sure they have load-bearing... Uh columns in the building. Very Blow up good. the bridge, too. This is a good plan. All right. Excellent. So, uh, you have your plan. Frankie, 
So as keeper, let me make sure I'm getting this correct. Uh, Frankie is going to miss our house the day before the ritual and is bringing Philip with him. Uh, the others of you will accompany everyone else, but sort of make yourself scarce while in town. Uh, Frankie is going to use his Frankiness to get close to Gavigan, shoot him execution style uh, while Philip is distracting him and possibly also attacking if the first attack does not actually succeed. At which point, Frankie assumes control of the cult, which seems like it will be possible because this is a cult built on dominance and uh, you can definitely bring Frankie's history to bear on this. Uh, meanwhile, the other party members uh, are going to just rig Miser House to blow during the ritual. Awesome. Cool. I wish you could see my face right now. It's amazing. I love this plan. Okay. So, uh, you have come up with this plan. It is very late in the evening on Thursday night. Is there any extra preparation that you would like to make between now and Sunday, or I suppose Saturday? So you've got all of Friday to prepare for everything that is about to unfold. I have a single thing that I'd like to ask about that may get me on government watch lists. Oh goodness. Okay, what is it? Uh I would like to make a hollow point bullet for the revolver to execute Gavigan with just to make sure like extra damage of some sort. I don't know say, if okay. that would be a firearms or a crafts roll or what have you. I wanted to come up with something to put on my blade so that it would, you know, do extra hurt. Um, you should just be able to buy one. An extra sharp blade or a hollow point bullet? A hollow point bullet. They're in, oh yeah, okay, yeah, just go out and buy one. <laughs> they were invented in the late nineteenth yeah. century. Late nineteenth, yeah. All Going right. To the local. Whatever shop. Yeah. Yeah. So you could make a firearms roll, or Percival could just make a credit rating roll. Um, I honestly, I would probably just have some laying around. Not laying around, but I do maintain an armory for like um, hunting and such. Give me that credit rating just in case. Okay. I mean, 1% failure. Yeah, I got a right. Okay. Extreme, I got an extreme success. Extreme success. All right, cool. So, uh yeah, Frankie, you get your hollow point bullets. Uh so let's upgrade the die damage uh to the next step to uh steal some mechanics from Savage Worlds. Um, and, uh, yeah, because that was an extreme success, Philip, uh, you managed to find, uh, a very corrosive, damaging poison, uh, that you can treat your weapon with that will also increase the step damage that it does. Sweet. Uh... Dorothy, Godric, or Percival, is there anything else that you would like to do to prepare for this? Uh, only what I DM'd you. Okay, that is noted. You do not get a response, but that doesn't strike you as out of character. Yeah, I was like, I'm not expecting one. Uh, yeah, and then I just make sure I have my guns. 
Uh, if it's possible, I'd like to bring a knife, cut any bindings, and a crowbar if we have to deal with locks, locked doors. Absolutely. Locked cages. And uh, I just want to make sure that when we tie me, it looks good, but I'm easily able to actually escape the bindings. Like, prepare for that. So like Chewbacca in A New Hope. Yes. All right, uh, Dorothy, is there anything you would like to do? Dorothy's just gonna get a book, particularly one about explosives and go to bed. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, so Dorothy, give me, um, give me library use, please. Okay, so uh, you succeed. Don't forget to take the little ticky box on your library use that you succeeded at a roll. Uh, so uh, you managed to find the correct book on explosives and sort of just uh, managed to figure out by studying pretty much all of the day on Friday. Uh, oh, here is how you find the load bearing stuff Here's how you blow it to hell. And so by the end of the day on Friday, you're pretty confident you know exactly where to put the dynamite to do the maximum amount of damage. It's also kind of weird that Percival has this sort of book in his library, but okay, he's a war vet. Percival also, probably doesn't even know he has that book in his library. Also cats, so many cats. Too many cats. Never too many cats. There are too many cats. Surprisingly, the house does not smell like a litter box. You probably have one person whose whole job is to just regularly patrol the house, cleaning the litter boxes. Yeah, at least one. Yeah, there's so many cats. So many. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I guess we'll just advance to Saturday then. All right, so what time of day would you like to arrive at Muser House? I don't know. Edward Gavigan. Right, it's a Saturday. Is the Penhu Foundation open right now? Would he logically be there right now, like in the middle of the day on a Saturday, or would he be no. at Miser House? Uh, hmm? He would. He would be at Miser House. Um, the Penhu Foundation is closed on Saturday because it is closed on all Saturdays. <laughs> but if there's something that you want to do on Friday, we can run that real quick. I was more asking just in case, like. We say, yeah, we're going to go there for noon, and then we get there, and oh, he's at the Penny Foundation. Yeah, uh, sometime mid-afternoon would be when Frankie would be going to Miser House, okay. ideally. Yeah, no, I would not tell you, like, oh yeah, you can totally uh, attack him in the middle of the day and be <laughs> like, psych, he's not there. That's a dick move. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> All right, so it is Saturday the 21st of February, 1925. It is one o'clock in the afternoon. So, uh, you have made all the preparations. You have arrived uh, at Wilton on Nays, the village which contains Neeser House. I assume you have secured lodgings at the nearby hotel. Um, Just in case. Yes, I check in under the name Cliff Reynolds. Okay. <laughs> As I okay, did that's before. funny. That's <laughs> funny. Okay. 
make sure the gun's loaded, make sure nothing's going to jam, just like make sure everything's cleared, uh, make sure Philip's tied tight, but not too tight. Okay. We're bound, but not too bound. And All right. Start making our way. Uh, so are you driving or walking? Driving. Oh no, we lost Kitty! No! We lost no! no. <clears throat> Tragedy struck right. today. We're gonna wait and see if Kitty comes back. Cap again? That is... It's the Chaos Gods tonight. The, the Elder Gods are just... I know! Ah. What phase is the moon tonight in real life? Because... Motherfuck. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's the new moon. Oh. Oh, good God. Yeah. This All is right. not a joke. And yes, spank my Betty your pizza. It looks delicious. <laughs> it does look pretty good. Oh, God, yes. All right, I, I've sent a message to Kitty Kimchi. We'll see if um, no. we'll see if everything's okay on her end. Um, but for now, you have a Gavigan to kill. So, uh, I'm so sorry. I forgot the answer uh, after the uh, camera crisis. Uh, hey. Are you walking or driving? I feel like driving would be less suspicious because walking suggests that Frank had walked uh, and like took a train or what have you with a bound hostage. Okay. Uh, so I so... would be in the back seat. Yeah, back seat. Make sure the. Maybe not even make sure oh. like the car doors don't open from inside. Just uh, like, yeah, Phillips in back. Yeah. Uh, also. Uh, before we get to that point, Philip is going to look at Frankie and say, uh, uh, to make sure to punch him in the face really well. Like, give me a good solid smack so, you, <laughs> so you've you seen see. that I have been hit around. Like right now, right here? You, yeah. All right. So, Bam. a couple things. First off, uh, everyone who is injured uh you can take uh two hit points back because uh you have been able to sort of essentially convalesce and rest up at Percival's house on Thursday night and Friday night. Yay. Philip, if you're asking Frankie to actually hit you for real Z's, he will do damage. Oh yeah, I know, but say this Frank, this Frank Marshall guy that you're supposed to, well, that you were, uh, does he seem like the kind of guy who would take somebody in perfect health to see the pet hunt show? I'm pretty sure that if I showed up without even a single bruise, that he'd be like, who the hell is this and why didn't you punch him? I mean, what can I'm I saying just... is you can roll disguise instead of rolling for damage. Um, I don't know about y'all, but, I mean, I'm really bad at making myself look like I'm somebody else and got Real quick, all that. Can we give Philip a quick, just, like, look over to see if he is still bruised from the explosion from two days earlier? Uh, how badly are you wounded, Mr. Legai? I'm at full health! Okay. Oh. Roll a... <laughs> oh, he's fine. Roll. Clocks him. I mean, her. I'll, I'll roll. I'll roll disguise just to see. But let's see. That five percent with a ninety-six oh, percent is a fumble. All right. Uh, yeah. Mister Legai, please roll a D four. <laughs> three damage. I Take am three hit points. Yes. I am appropriately bruised now for being a. 
person that was messing around with the factory and being taken in by Frankie Marshall. All right. So what happens is you drive up Frankie with Philip in your back seat, just sort of very bruised, big black eye, uh, maybe a little blood coming from his nose or his his mouth where you maybe, you know, knock a tooth loose. Uh, and so they walk up and this is how everyone has sort of reacted to you who knows who Frankie is. They sort of walk up about to challenge your car. They look at you in the driver's seat. They're like, oh, Mr. Marshall, please, please drive on. Please, please, sir. Um, they don't even like look in the back seat. They just like, please get away from us as quickly as possible. So you very easily get access to Nisar House. Uh, you knock on the door. You've got Philip sort of like in your, like in an arm lock. Uh, the butler is like, oh, Mr. Marshall, we weren't expecting you. I have a very important business. Just kind of like jostle Philip a bit to show Mr. Garrick. Oh, oh, yes. Uh, where, where would you like to meet him? Um, he's, he's in his chambers right now. But, uh, I'll we, meet him we can... there. Uh, yes, absolutely. Uh, you know the way. Please. Hmm. Uh, and the servants just scatter. Like, this yeah. is a bad dude. All right. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you've been here before. You know the layout. Uh, you end up in... Edward Gavigan's chamber, which you have seen before, he is at his desk studying something. Um, so how do you enter the room? Uh, <clears throat> do a good old bap, bap, bap on the door to make presence known. Mm -hmm. uh, wait a few seconds for like a come in or any sort. Oh, don't do that. Just, just go. And then throw the door open throw All Philip right. inside. So, what you hear is, it's not dinner time yet. Mr. Gavigan, I have important business that I need to show you. Uh, God, Frank? All right. And so, what you hear is, uh, like, step, 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 open the door. God Present man. Philip the guy. Who the fuck is this? This. I found this stain poking around the factory. I told you I don't know anything about this. Uh... Oh shit! I'm not supposed to talk about that. I do not. I'm not part of. <laughs> Anything with Mr. Elias. I don't know what you all talking about. Please stop Ooh. eating me. Mr. Elias. And he was at Henson. Hmm. What the absolute fuck is going on at Henson? Everyone quit. I'm trying to figure that out myself, and I think this and kind of grab Philip Jocelyn a bit. Piece of shit is responsible. Or at least connected to him. Uh, Thought maybe you want to take a crack at him yourself. And so Gavigan starts looming over Philip and, like, yes, yes, come in, come in. So brings Philip you into the bedroom. Philip immediately starts cowering like he is scared shitless of this guy because he is looking at Frank, looks at Gavigan. At Frank, at Gavigan. Please, I just want to go home. <laughs> Where? Oh, no, no. You'll, you'll be allowed to go home. Have a nice, really? nice, long, long rest. But where the fuck are my components? I, I, didn't, I didn't take none of them. That was the others. You're lying. Huh? I don't lie too good. Do I look 
Do I look like I'm smart enough to lie to you? Please, I just want to go home. They told me I would be getting paid, and 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 they told me it was just a simple job, and they were going to give me a lot of money, and I like money. Who told you? Well, you see, there are these people that, you know, they said that they were working for a guy named uh, Elias, and he had a lot of money, and they, if I did this for him, then... I could get a nice fat check and then I could just go and, you know, relax and spend a few years in early retirement, you know? Jackson Elias is dead. Carlton Ramsey is dead. Who's paying you? Wait, they don't got no money? <laughs> Look directly at Frank. They don't got no money? Ugh. Frank All tries right. to hold it together of just like a single sweat beads just rolls down his face just sorry <laughs> mouths the words Ugh. I am I am here you're gonna kill me and they don't even have money oh Oh, goodness. Yes. My good fuck. You're absolutely going to die, but don't worry. It's going to be for a worthy cause. Uh, Frankie, please escort this gentleman to the basement. At that note, I immediately try and just full body tackle uh, Gavigan so that I can run out the door. Okay. Because I presume I presume that this is the point where uh, we are going to enact this plan because either that or I'm going to be walked out. So I'm just going to go for it. The moment Philip jumps or even like twitches, Frankie pulls out the revolver to get okay. ready. Okay. Uh, I would like. Philip, give me a brawl roll. Frankie, give me a firearms roll. Uh, because this is a surprise attack. Uh, you know what? Yeah, just give me the roll. Yeah, because it is a surprise attack. He will not get dodged. So, oh shit! All that die hit a 90. Bye bye. <laughs> I saw that okay. nine crop up on that die, so, and I was like, no. I assume you're spending two points of your luck oh, to yeah. succeed. Oh, yeah. Okay. So go ahead and roll me the damage for whatever weapons you are using. Remember, you get to roll one step up. Uh, Philip, do you have a damage bonus? Because you will get to I roll do. that. Okay. Go ahead and roll your damage bonus. So, can we state that as I am tackling him, I break the bindings and try and stab him, or... Oh, yeah, because this no. was, like, okay. costume binding? Okay, so, certainly. perfect. So, one step up would be a die eight, and then I get my... die four of extra. So, I hit him for six. Nice. Okay. So, uh, you just lash out, uh, and, uh, Philip, you just clobber him. Uh, Dickie, you do manage to shoot him, but you don't, your aim is just a little bit off, so you don't manage to shoot him directly in the heart, but in the shoulder. Uh, and so he looks on you, looks at all of you, and just says, what the fuck? Uh, and so now we are in rounds. Uh, so. Uh, what is everybody's dexterity? 
65. Okay. His dexterity is better, so he will go first. Uh... Okay. Dicky, please roll your power. That is a hard success. Okay. 39. Uh You succeed. Fuck. Gavigan has oh. a power of a hundred and fucking fifteen. Uh <laughs> and he rolled a 61. So, your 39 <laughs> wins. So, the terrible, terrible spell he was trying to use against you does not work. <laughs> nice. Victory is right. ours, hopefully. Uh, so, go ahead and make attack rolls again, please. Oh, oh mother. Oh. Okay, I am going. No. Can, can I push that roll? You cannot push combat. I'm sorry. Can somebody give me a bonus? To this just rolled a nat hundred, guys. <laughs> I'm not allowed. <laughs> yeah, uh, and that's a fail from Frankie Dicky Schwarmy. Schwarm. Frankie also oh, failed. No. Uh, so we're gonna give everybody uh, a moment or two. Uh, cause Twitch is on a delay, um, but <laughs> Frankie, give me another power roll, please, while we wait. Oh, boy. There we go. <clears throat> another hard success, 39. I swear to God, these dice are weighted. <laughs> oh, thank you, Betty. <laughs> I'm gonna re-roll that 10 slot. And with a 30, I succeed on that attack. Okay. Hmm. So, so uh, you you may roll damage. I hit him for six more damage. Okay. Uh, you absolutely batter him. He is still upright. Um, he tries another spell that does not work. Um, and we are now in the third round of combat. Why won't you die? <laughs> All right. One so it... more power roll, Frankie, oh, please. Oh no, a power roll. Because oh. I it's failed my attack. for fire again. arms for when that occurs, but the power roll. Ooh. That's I another. That's an extreme success. <laughs> Jesus Christ, I swear to God, these <laughs> guys. <laughs> All right. Uh, Philip, you failed to connect. Mr. Schwarm, please roll damage. Yeah, damage. Here you go. Here's some damage. Pua. Seven. Okay. So, uh, essentially, what happens is Gavigan. Uh, starts talking in just this absolutely blasphemous language but Frankie as an experienced spellcaster you can just easily thwart all of his magical attacks against you giving the both of you enough time to blow this guy's fucking head right off there is a dead Edward Gavigan at your feet Holy shit! I did all okay. Level with me, Mr. Marshall. Yeah. Was what he said true? There is a fund put in place. Both of these, both of those people are dead, but other people are handling the accounts. There's money saved up. You will be paid. In fact, if you wanted to take anything from here, I know I. Ugh, ugh, I need to I need to sit down. There's some valuable stuff here, I guarantee it. If you wanted to take that, make it a bonus for whatever whatever I, whatever we pay you. Ugh. 
a, a bonus. Yes, indeed, a bonus. Because now, now that he has said these things and you have agreed, I definitely think we need to talk about how I am getting paid because that is part of the reason I am here, sir. I do not like having been misled about the phones. And I immediately start looking through the entire place to find money and other valuables. At least the room we're in. Okay, so uh, on the body of Edward Gavigan, and I'm not even going to call for a sanity check, because uh, this was a bad dude. Uh, he needed to get a shuffle off this mortal coil. Uh, so, you find, uh, some raw cash in his home, uh, so, in here, uh, you find a couple, a couple items. Uh, let's see. Dorothy found the headdress, so that's not here. There is a very beautiful painting of uh, an Egyptian pharaoh. Uh, make a note that you have seen this painting. There is also a clock on the wall which is swiss made which is the most accurate clock you have ever seen uh you also see laid out are some extremely lavish robes and so uh, i've said before the robes that zara sent you were very basic black like the that the most base initiate would wear and you have encountered nicer fancier robes these are really essentially over the top cultist robes uh because of the way that the robes are constructed you could absolutely use these to pass as edward gavigan during the ritual. May not even need to declare that I'm in control of the cult, no, right? I just need to tell the people here that I'm in control. Do some sort yeah. of a ceremony later on, if need be. If any survive, you know, invite them to a ceremony and then. Well, I mean, also, we, depending on how they show up, they could just come one by one and we could just deal with them as they come. You, you do know that they will come by the carload. Okay. Uh, now the only thing that, uh, Philip is looking for is how much money? <laughs> And also anything that looks like it's uh, occulty, because Philip has no actual occult score. Uh, he's just going to hand directly that or that directly off to uh, Frank. Okay, and uh, this seems like a really good point to end tonight's show. Uh, there will absolutely be a showdown next week. Uh, will Philip survive? Will Frankie survive? Will the rest of our intrepid investigators survive? Only Nyarla Kotep knows. Uh, so, thank you all for playing. Thank you to our wonderful audience. 
for being our wonderful audience. If we just want to do one very quick, uh, who we are, what we're up to, and when we can see you next. Hey everyone, I'm Dave, uh, Twin Dead Tweets on the Bird app. I played Percival Harrington the second this evening. Uh, you can catch me next, possibly tomorrow, playing in something in place of Pathfinder Reign of Winter. Not sure you're 100% yet. Uh, but if not tomorrow, then you'll catch me here on Monday. Hey guys, I'm Alan, your Eldritch Keeper. You can find me on Twitter and Twitch as the Eldritch Keeper. And you can find me next, next Thursday here on Four Pole Tales for Savage Supers. And of course, the following day for Ask of Nerma Thotap. You can also find me on my Twitch channel, uh, currently gaming and playing cultist simulator which fits perfectly with this game and uh, yeah come check it out hello everyone uh, i am devin you can find me online at sort of sullied i have been philip Legee, the guy depends on who you ask and uh, you can find me next in about an hour for cult hello i'm frankie dicky schwam marshall esquire I'm also Kisama. You can find me on Twitter at TrueKisama. And you can also find me on Thursday for our Savage Supers game. And coming soon, uh, The Wild Beyond the Witchlight for our Patreon peoples. It's all cool. Go check them out. Excellent. Uh, please also don't. Uh, forget to check out Kitty Kimchi, who uh, lost power at her house. Uh, and so we will hopefully have her back uh, next week. Uh, I have been your keeper. My name is Rachel. You can find me in Stolen Fires pretty much everywhere on the internet. Uh, you will find me, uh, hopefully, with a not misbehaving camera, uh, Sunday night for White Walls. Uh, Monday, Solemn Veil, Tuesday, uh, Dark Sun, and tomorrow, uh, yes, uh, there is not going to be any Pathfinder Reign of Winter. Instead, I will be running a one-page RPG, Punk Pride Pixies. It's a beautiful day in the city, and you are a horrible pixie. Uh, fight cats! Fight other pixies! It's gonna be great. Uh, so come check us out, normal time slot for that. Uh, anyway, uh, before we leave you for the week, we're just going to do a quick round of votes, audience votes and cast votes. They are both worth an extra D10 on the luck roll. Uh, so, uh, very quickly in the normal order, starting with Elaine, uh, whose roleplay improved your experience? Who did you appreciate? Who did you enjoy? Uh, I'm giving my vote to uh, Mr. Philip Legui. I really like the character. It's very fun. And he just wants to blow everything to hell. <laughs> I love it. Uh, I'm going to give it to uh, Mr. Schwarm Marshall. Marshall Schwarm. Just still playing it great. gonna give mine to uh Ms. kimchi because i love the fact that she's always just like it's just murder you do it once you do it a thousand times now, now that you say that it is very concerning now now that i <laughs> now that we're not in the game and it's like yeah that, that huh uh my vote has to go to Shout out to uh, Kitty Kimchi for just, yeah, kill one, kill a thousand. They hang you once anyway. Uh, and a shout out to uh, Philip the Guy for the the whole scene at the end with the, the payment. But I have to give it to Percival specifically for saying the most British thing <laughs> to ever have been said. Yeah. And British. Yeah, just wow. All right. Uh, awesome. Uh, as always, my vote 
goes to all of you, but my vote is not worth anything except more pain and suffering, which we will see tomorrow night as we finally decide to confront the cult of the Dark Pharaoh. How many people want to survive? Good fucking question. Percival is hopeful. <laughs> all right. Uh, we will see you all next week. Yeah. Have a good night, everybody. Have a good night, everyone. Bye.